Hey guys, I'm coming from my webcam once again. Preparing, I guess, for what's gonna be 80s month. It became kind of obvious right, you know, from the beginning that I really was excited about it at the same time. I was trying to kind of, I guess, figure out something to fill the gap in between. And this week, I thought something that might be really interesting for a lot of you. I would say the biggest aspect of the 80s for me is going to mostly be a lot about the cartoons and toys. There's a lot of things from the 80s that I really enjoy, but those two things are the things I think that I get most nostalgic about. So in a weird way, I associate a lot of the 80s with those things. So what I'm going to show you is some things that I'm just going to label 80s homework for lack of a better term. I'm going to give you guys some suggestions on things that you can check into. If you're like me and you grew up in the 80s, a lot of times uh, you fall back on physical paper media instead of always going directly to your iPad or your computer or whatever, your phone to look something up. I really enjoy the textile you know, aspect of paper media. So what I'm going to show you today is going to be some books and magazines. First thing I'm going to show are some really, really cool books that have a lot of 80s related toys in them. If you're interested in looking into 80s toys, this is going to be some of the things that I would recommend as far as they've been out there for a long time. And to this date, a lot of the things in here, I haven't found very many things better than that. First thing I want to show and this I've had for an eternity. It's what it seems like an eternity. I've had this probably about, well, 15 years, probably easily. I've probably had this since about 96. Sometimes you'll hear them refer to this as the AFNTNR because of how long the title is. But it's Action Figure News and Toy Review. And it's actually a monthly magazine that's still going to this date. But they used to put out these collecting loose figure guides. And for people that are not familiar with action figures and collectible toys, the word loose is a uh, common term that they use to mean an action figure that's loose of the packaging. In other words, it's one that you can hold in your hand that's no longer new and sealed in the manufacturer's container, you know, whether it be a card or a box or whatever the case may be. As you can see in this one, some of the things they have is Star Wars figures, which this is the Power of the Force line, the original Power of the Force line that ran about 1985. There's some Simpsons, and I think this is the original, I think that's an LJN uh, toy line that ran in the late 80s. Superpowers, of course, Kenner toy line, uh, similar to the Star Wars. There is some Secret Wars, which is the Marvel kind of equivalent of superpowers that came out around the same time. But yeah, this is kind of a neat thing. Covers very, very few toy lines, I'll say that. But the few toy lines it does cover, it does very well. Let me just skip to, especially since because of my 80s video I did before, I showed some superpowers figures, if you didn't know what those figures were. And as you can see, each of these figures is shown outside of the package and also shown with their weapon in hand. Some people prefer this form and other people prefer to have the toy laying next to them. So let me show you that. Kind of similar. This is the way that a lot of people prefer to see toys with their accessories, which is just off to the side. This is the Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. I'm showing mostly 80s toys there. It does briefly cover some 70s stuff. But as a whole, there is not a lot in here. It's uh, very general information from the early days of when action figure collecting was getting really big, which is the early 1990s to the mid-1990s. So this is just, as you can see, a very thin, about magazine size. If you're looking for um, original G.I. Joes from around that line, you know, the early to mid-80s up through, whatever. This is a similar one. I'll let you read the title of that. It's got a really long title. The Official Collector's Guide to Collecting and Completing Your G.I. Joe Figures and Accessories. And the thing you might want to take note is that author's name. That'll be much easier to find that by his name. That is one that's probably easier to find on eBay, but you could probably find that on Amazon. Now, for you guys that are looking more general, just all kinds of figures, these will not be loose. Most of these will be packaged, but they're great for just looking at people's names. Like if you just can't remember a certain character or action figure's name, 
This is the one I would recommend as far as like you want to look at it like an encyclopedia type of thing. It is dated information, but it's very interesting and helpful information. This is Tomart's Encyclopedia Price Guide. This is kind of the competitor, I guess, to Action Figure News and Toy Review. For the longest time, Tomart and then Action Figure News and Toy Review were the two main market magazines as far as uh, until Toy Fair came along, which Toy Fair had a really different angle. It was a lot of comedy, and they dropped their price guide section. Uh, kind of early on and just didn't focus on that very much. Tomart is really, really good as far as uh, showing lots of color pictures. There are some black and whites, but these are alphabetical. This is, uh, of course, in order here. Let me in order. This is A Team to G.I. Joe. Then you have G.I. Joe to Star Trek, and then Star Wars to Zybots. So yeah, these are really interesting, very thick volumes, but like I say, some black and white, some colored, and it is everything. This goes back to the 60s, goes up to about roughly some toy lines late 95, other toy lines early 96. This is from that time period. This is, was released around 96. So don't get your hopes up on trying to find everything in there, but it's uh, it's got an entry for most toys in general. This is another great one that's just specifically 80s. It doesn't have a picture of everything, but um, its main focus is pictures in general. If you like to see lots of color pictures, all different kinds of toys and different toy conditions, this is definitely the one for you. I would say that the guy doesn't spend very much time explaining things. He skips over toy lines completely. And the price guide section of this, which he tried to focus on, is way out of date, so it's not that important, but it's it's very nostalgic. Next thing I'm gonna show is gonna segue over into the other half of the things that I mentioned, which is that cartoons or animation of the 1980s, another fond memory that I've got that really sticks with me. This kind of has a little bit of both. It has all kinds of kids related stuff from toys, but lots of like stickers and different things from different TV shows and media. But it's called Just Can't Get Enough. This does have a Trapper Keeper style. So you can see that with the Velcro, which is kind of 80s in and of itself. Looks like there are some uh, scratch and sniff stickers there. And you can see all the usual suspects of the 80s there. This is um, actually really, really interesting because this is very 80s, but it's written to the generation that grew up in the 80s that's now grown. So there's a lot of adult style humor in here. And I don't mean that it's just like completely vulgar or anything. There's garbage bill kids, but it's not necessarily for kids. It has lots of lots of funny memories because that's a lot of it is the authors. So there's more than one author and they take turns, you know, just kind of lampooning certain characters and then telling us what's uh, cool about them. And they have these little section called what does it all mean and the product and who was it for and just all kinds of fun stuff. It, it makes even like things that I wasn't interested in, like Cabbage Patch Kids, it makes that interesting because it just, you know, kind of explains why people like things like that. But there's just so much to see in here. This book right here, honestly, is one of the few books that I bought. I opened it out of the box. I sat down and read it cover to cover. You can read this book in an easy 30 minutes or something like that. It's a very quick read. Since then, I've read it like two or three more times. I always like go look up one particular thing that seems funny. And then once I pick it up, I actually can't put it back down. It's I've never had really a book like that. I just love that book. So Matthew Robinson and Jensen Carp. And Carp is spelled with a K. But yeah. So that's the authors. And as far as I know, I don't think they've done anything else, which is a shame. I mean, that's a, that's a great book. I'm going to segue that all the way through now to just the cartoon section. That was a little bit of toys and a little bit of cartoon. And this is a magazine I found just a little over a year ago, if you've never heard of it. And it's called Serial Geek. This magazine itself deals primarily with just 80s animation. And it has interviews with lots of the creators of the show. That's really tweaking the, the picture quality. It's it's an expensive magazine, but it's a very high quality magazine. There's also, you know, of course, Jessica Rabbit there. A Transformers style cover. There is the real Ghostbusters. 
and this one is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I only have four of these, and honestly, there's not that many, and they're all very hard to find. And they and they don't make these like in any kind of regular pattern, like no discerning way to just know the next issue was going to come out. You can't just like go to your comic book store and expect it to be there. And that is the best place to look is comic book stores or possibly online. I haven't found very many places to get these. I have issue three, four, five, and seven. Issue three is from early 2008. Issue four is from right afterwards in 2008. These are quarterly is what they're supposed to be. But issue five didn't come out to the third quarter of 2009, so there's over a year between issue uh, four and five. It's just, it's great on the inside here. There's the Ghostbusters. Again, this is actually on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one, so you can see that they actually cover a lot of the same topics over and over again, but different aspects and different interesting things. Dungeons and Dragons, talking about... Um, there's a lot of what if kind of things, you know, what if we would have had another season or what would have happened if they would have done this. Also a lot of like uh, people saying what would an updated version of this cartoon be like. Just all kinds of stuff. Unlikely team up. That's kind of funny. There's a lot of really great artwork in here that is new artwork based on um, old animation. There's Shredder. This is the kind of like the rogues gallery here of um, TMNT. But yes, this is an amazing magazine. If you can get your hands on Serial Geek, I highly recommend it if you're a fan of that genre of television, 80s animation. So yeah, I'm just going to label this homework and that'll give you some things to think about if you guys really would like, you know, some interesting things to look at between now and the beginning of June. That's what I would recommend. On a side note here, I just picked this guy up yesterday at a uh, toy show. Unfortunately, I was unable to video any of that toy show. They had um, a policy against cameras, which is very weird. There was a train show and a doll and toy show. I only paid to go to the doll and toy show just because that's the only one that has action figures and stuff like that. The train show was extra and I didn't really have any interest in seeing uh, toy trains. So I just went in there and looked around and I didn't find much, but I did find this guy for two bucks. So vintage Lion-O in decent condition, no accessories, but two bucks, you can't beat that. So there you go. Hope you guys have a good week. Check back with me next week and we're still building towards 80s month. So enjoy. Take care. Bye.